we've already looked at um, setups from other positions, like escaping from underside or feet, or doing it from the top side position. You can do it from guard passing is is a classic example where you're seeking the underhook, it denies you, and there's a little bit of a scramble. And usually you're you're not happy there. You either try and pull it back into your guard, and if you're not happy there, you try and aggressively come up. And when you come up, you're seeking the head and arm. You've got to train yourself to look for that, especially in no game. If you don't have nice gi grips to sort of slow their growth down. So let's put this grip here. Okay. Uh, I talked before about you need to isolate this arm. If you're lucky enough and they are um, complying in sight, like going for it and grabbing your hip, you've got the arm and then you can do the various techniques. But if it's kind of in there, he's leaning on him at this point. You need a, way to, a mechanical way to bring the elbow to you. So it's going to talk about that with a technique later on where that's kind of part of the of the technique. For, for if you're doing for headlocks and guillotines, then you need to isolate as well. So normally I would just use the normal, you've got the chin strap here, and then you connect your arms together, and you can use the leverage of your own elbow to bring this in. That's usually not bad, okay? Um, I wouldn't, I would probably do it like this, rather than this, because this is a weaker, for some reason it feels weaker, you can try it yourself. You know how you would normally do the, the high guillotine? Try to leave it there, I don't know. Try and resist that. Yeah, whereas if I change the grip to the palm up, I can get more of a sort of a leverage motion. Notice my head. My head is here. I want to find my head underneath him. Then I'm going to roll. When I roll, this is a new bit John will talk. Track the arm. I continue. Now I reach. He's not going anywhere to the track the arm. Pull, we might talk about this. Pull, here, and we are here. Using this, here, like this, and we're going to think about how you're going to grip here, palm away, that brings down. I go underneath, trap. Actually, this one has to go through here, and in here. So my bicep is on that side here. Oh, yeah, yeah. How's that feel? <laughs> Not very. Can you say it again? Not <laughs> <laughs> we'll start from that same uh, position, which is the wrestler's head and arm, where we're just pincering in and squashing in the arm. Um, but this time, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a reaction of Marcel coming forward. So, where this would normally be stand up, where this would normally be used in wrestling, is you take that wrestler's head and arm. And then you just drag them down with it. Um, Let's have to out. <laughs> <laughs> and the same thing with it, you can actually do the anaconda choke from standing as well. This is a this is a takedown in wrestling. Oh, nice. You can take it. <laughs> <laughs> but assume we're from the knees. So we've got this we've got this tight head and arm here. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a reaction going forward because I want him to base both of his hands forward and also I don't want him to be able to posture up. If he postures up, he kills this choke, um, but if his weight is moving forward, he can't posture up at the same time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag him and as I drag him, I'm going to come up to my feet and I'm going to try as if I'm trying to drag him through my legs. So the move without the person looks like this. <laughs> Are oh, you laughing now? <laughs> laugh at me. <laughs> well, I've got to create that reaction because if I don't, Marcel, just try and posture up. Yeah. If I don't, and I try and go for the, oh, it's too far away. I get nothing. The the trick to this choke is bringing is that getting that reaction of him coming forward. So I drag him because he's coming forward. You can't posture, and I'm making sure that my leg is over the top of his neck. Um. It shouldn't, some people will get their hands in the way and whatever, it shouldn't matter because this choke's too, they just choke's tight enough anyway. Um, and as I sit back to the side, I throw my other leg over his back. This is the most important one. Oh, I'm not putting pressure on yet. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the finish to the choke is kicking with this leg that's over his head to create uh, an angle in his neck and pulling back with my uh, hands that are now linked together. And it, won't, it shouldn't take very much. Nice, yeah. nice. Um, but again, if you don't drag forward, you'll miss this every time. So here, 
drag. And sometimes he puts himself in it. <laughs> on this time. <laughs> uh, but that drag forward has to be quite violent and aggressive, and it has to create that reaction. And bear in mind, because you've got their arm trapped as well, they will be basing with their hands to try and not let their face smash the floor. One more time. So here, if you can come to your feet, even better. Drag, sit, over, kick with the leg, and pull with the arms. Marcel, well, do you want to see that? Yeah. Okay. I had a question as well. Yeah. What's the grip situation? So different people advocate different things. The thing is, um, the only thing that's going to get him out of this choke is if your grip fails you. Because, um, yeah. bear in mind, it's like a, you're doing like a deadlift pull, so that there's more than enough strength there to affect the neck. I like to use an S grip because I, just because I always have. But I know people do, that do this with a gable grip. Um, it's about what your strongest grip is, basically. Just whatever it's going to be. I like the S grip because it's... Um, it's strong, yeah. Yeah, but then also you get the bony bits of your forearms in there, too. <laughs> so, same setup as, uh, as before on the first one. Lock that in, and I'm pulling that. I drag, and at the same time as I drag, I'm coming up. Sit back, leg over the back. This leg's going to extend, this is going to pull back. Just like you're doing a, imagine you're doing a big deadlift with a kettlebell. Ah. Yeah, the key movement is that. Yeah. If you can master that, you'll get this every time. Okay, let's get it, guys. Let's have fun. One, two, three. From here to here. It's the thing I think most people are struggling yeah. with. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's easier if you do it off your feet. So if I'm here and I get to my feet first, that makes it easier. But also, because I've got, because I've got a piece of, of human here, <laughs> um, as I'm pulling him, this is also... I'm, I'm, so I'm pulling him forward, but I'm also pulling myself onto him. It's, it's the exact same motion. So have, doing it with a person is, is, is much easier. So start from your feet because it will be easier. And then as you pull. Yeah, but you make it look easier. So, <laughs> like imagine if I had a rope here. I could pull myself up with this rope, right? So it's not two discrete things. It's the pull also drags you too. But start from your feet. It is a little trickier getting used to doing it from your knees. Yeah? Cool. Is that cool? Thanks.